So where we are is RV loft, which is sadly ridiculously far from our house. How far is it? How many miles? In miles, I don't know. 45, 50 minutes. Yeah, but it's where we have to store our camper. The storage in Atlanta, you can pay almost as much just for some empty lot they let you park it on as this warehouse, which is climate controlled. They leave it out for you when they know you're coming to pick it up, but it's climate controlled. Um, they do some simple maintenance. They'll clean it for you. They fill it with water for you if you want, get the air conditioner, I mean, get the refrigerator running. So, we're really happy with them. It costs about $250 a month for our 24 foot camper. Hi, sweet Maggie. Waiting very patiently for us to get the RV set up. That's when we were backing up at Pickett's, uh, Pickett's Memorial and yeah. got it We turned pinched. too tight and it got pinched right in there like that. And um, Everything still seemed to work, but yeah, but the, the truck actually started having odd faults in the uh, engine control module. So this has a nice, sturdy receiver receiver. Thank you. I didn't know that yeah. we had some trouble. Our little guy, Max, we had to upgrade that after the built in receiver fell off the trailer going down the interstate one night and that's from dragging the bike rack along behind us but we fixed it we actually took it to a local it up. he couldn't believe how mike cho was his name he couldn't believe how cheap the original design was and it just offended him <laughs> so he fixed it <laughs> Me doing absolutely nothing. Like Randy does the trailer attaching. Can I talk to you about where we're going while you're doing that? Or yeah, I think that you? should be fine. <laughs> so we're starting our week long trip to the coast. And today we are getting all the way to Tybee Island, which is the beach closest to Savannah. So we're on the way. We are definitely not going to get there by six. So that's okay. Sometimes you really just feel like you're just never going to get out of Atlanta. Time stands still, traffic stands still. You get up first thing in the morning to head out. At 2 o'clock in the afternoon, you're still here. Is it 2? No, it's not. No, it's not. I was exaggerating slightly. Right now, it looks like it might be. Wow. 
Okay, so we I thought we were yes. gonna get up because we had nothing else to do today but get here. So in my head we'd be here like mid afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't. It didn't, didn't work quite out. happen that way. Yeah, so I know. So this is a grizzly and yours is a gluten free bun. Classic dog. Classic dog, yeah. So now we're on I'm not sure what street this is, but this is definitely the very beachy all the beach shops, beach toys, and we're gonna check out Docks, which is a local bar. Eight dollars, that's a lot. Docks is a little loud for us, so we walked out on the pier and watched all the pretty lights, people walking on the beach with their phones. I found out later that's not great for sea turtles, but it was awfully pretty to watch. A lot of people fishing out on the pier, and it looked like you could rent the equipment if you came down there during the day. We don't fish, but every time we go camping, we think, maybe we should. Next morning, the dogs and I got up really early. Like, we were out way before 7, maybe 6.30, and there were already people in the large dog park because it was gonna be so hot that day. So the dogs and I visited the small dog park, and then we went on a walk around the area adjacent to the campsite. I was even more rule conscious than usual because the dog parks were both right behind the police station and it looked like they were kind of squeezed in on leftover municipal land. I didn't know much about Tybee Island, honestly. We'd only ever been over there for maybe an afternoon at the beach from Savannah or from Skidaway Island. And it was so interesting to see all these leftover military or coast guard batteries, encampments, forts. I don't really even know what they all were, but it was cool. They were just kind of incorporated in the street scene on Tybee. Some looked like they were completely abandoned. Some looked like they were used for storage. One was a storm shelter. Tybee has a really fascinating history. I knew that Savannah was where Georgia started, at least the European settlements in Georgia. But I didn't realize that Tybee went back to Oglethorpe Settlement, that the lighthouse there is the oldest one in Georgia. Honestly, I liked Tybee a lot more than I expected to. It wasn't that I had a bad feeling about it before this trip. It just kind of got lost in the other Georgia islands, Skidaway and Sea Islands and anyway. Our campground was a great location for walking around, but it was the smallest campsite I think I've ever been on. Our awning went from one side and our slide actually went a little bit over the edge on the other side. When nobody else was there briefly after checkout on Sunday, it was really pretty. The big oak trees are gorgeous, the Spanish moss, the resurrection ferns, but it was really tight. The campsite was nice though. Good facilities, very clean, friendly staff. So we did enjoy our stay. 
So we decided we're always going to try to find an Orthodox church when we're traveling, if we're gone on a Sunday and if we can at all. And we did find the Greek Orthodox Church in Savannah and went there for liturgy Sunday morning. So Maggie's trying to help Randy with breakfast. She's already had his coffee. I'll hold that for you. Never. All I had on that plate was melon. Disappointing, huh, Maggie? Very disappointing. All right, we left the pets behind. We're going back into Savannah to see Flannery O'Connor's childhood home. I always feel like I should like Flannery O'Connor stories more than I actually have liked Flannery O'Connor stories, but maybe I'll understand her better after I tour her childhood home. Maybe. What's the Flannery? They a not good, work like Flannery O'Connor. A uh, good man is hard to find. It's probably her most famous short story. You read it in high school, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. It was true. I do like Flannery O'Connor stories better now. The house is really interesting, just period pieces and technology, but also her childhood reviews of her books that she outgrew when she decided she was an adult at the age of six. You're welcome to move into the space if you'd like to. Uh, the bathroom was her favorite room in the house. She would decorate it with flowers from cousin Katie's garden, and it was where she would host her play dates. So her mom, <laughs> of course, being Regina, her mom would handpick the girls from the Catholic school who she thought Flannery should be friends with, <laughs> invite them over, and then Flannery would sit them in the tub with her and hand them Edgar Allan Poe or Grimm's fairy tales, and either they'd be too freaked out to ever come back over, and that's great, she could read by herself. Okay, so we stopped in to a coffee shop that had a sign that said it was a chocolate library. And when you got... I got Bananas Foster. Okay. And I got... Orange Blossom Espresso. All right. That's the Bananas Foster. It does not taste like bananas. No, where's it from? Brooklyn. Well, no wonder. <laughs> Mine's from Peru, and it's much better. <laughs> okay, so I have to say, I actually like his chocolate pretty well, too. It's just creamier than he likes. So I'm sorry to have made fun of this chocolate bar actually quite nice. When we got back that afternoon, we decided to make a loop walk about three or four miles. We walked down to the river beach, which was through a little bit of a mosquito infested slough, but not too bad. Savannah takes giant cargo ships, obviously. Look at that. That is cool. The huge cargo ships that you can see from the river beach leaving the port of Savannah make really large waves as they go by. We had a shrimp get stranded at our feet and it was kind of fun to rescue the shrimp even though we eat them all the time. We also saw a lot of dolphins right there from the shore, which is always interesting. <laughs> walk from the river beach around the point until you are on the main Atlantic beach. There we go. Okay, so we just went walking from our campsite to the river beach, along to the main beach. It's 
saw some big cargo ships go down. Rescued a little shrimp. Rescued shrimp. It's been an eventful walk. <laughs> and now we're going to try to walk to Zanzibar. Yeah. Yeah. Happy hour. I'm just about to take the bike ride from Port Pulaski to Savannah. Um, this trail has been closed for a while, so it just reopened in May, and I'm excited to try it. It's not that bad today, maybe high 80s for the temperature, so not as miserable as it could be. Well, I made it back to the truck. So for me, that was right around 10 miles. I don't know the thing about why it doesn't go all the way. Um, I passed a couple people who agreed it was very hot, but mostly nobody was out there. I would completely do this trail again earlier in the morning. Um, it would be much nicer before the sun's directly overhead. And in the fall and spring, I'm sure it's really nice, it's, uh, winter too. But it was fun and I did see lots of birds. I didn't get any of those on film. But for me, biking out on a marsh was pretty magical because I really love these marshes and it was a way to get out further into the marsh than I do when I'm just walking. And a little bit different view than we get kayaking. So we're leaving Savannah, headed to Hunting Island, which was what started the whole trip was I wanted to go to Hunting Island. It's a dark sky park and you can get good use of the Milky Way. 